New, 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 new. Okay. More of this. More of this. That's kind of our motto here. Um, yeah, we have three more electromagnets. Last week we put in one electromagnet and now we've got more. Um, I think we had the 2.5 kilogram and then now we have the 5, 10, and 25 kilograms. So I'll just show them. The wrenches are getting bigger. Yeah. Well, what's funny is actually the, these can pick up some stuff that's way, way heavier, but we just don't really have anything that heavy. Like I, I found a, um, like a mallet that was a two, two pound mallet and I used, I picked it up with the second smallest electromagnet but I can just show how these look and work okay. on the overhead so yeah we just have uh, four different sizes um, starting with uh, the smallest one which I think is 2.5 kilogram and then uh, this one is uh, I think this is 5 10 and 25 I just want to uh, make sure that people know because it's a it's a common question. Just because the holding force is ten kilograms doesn't mean it can pick up something that's ten kilograms. Um, one fifth is um, probably what I would you know recommend to to think about. It, it also depends on what what you're picking up, how smooth it is. Like if it's a perfectly smooth steel cube, it's very ferromagnetic. Um, I think maybe like half or one fifth of the uh, hold rate, but you'll have to experiment to see how much you could pick up. Of course, um, if you do have something that's oddly shaped, the bigger ones will just enact more force. There'll be more force. You'll be able to pick it up more. Um, but you know, each one they they get more expensive because they're they have windings and they take more power. So I think it's like you know one one and a half two and three watts or something like that. Um, so let's just check out this one. It's very easy to power. Give these five volts. And I got this alligator clip, kind of to a five volt wall adapter. It doesn't make a sound, but it's now magnetized. And then, you know, it's, it's now magnetic. And then uh, if I let go, it's no longer magnetic. So that's it. It's electromagnetic. Great for picking up stuff, moving stuff. If the stuff that you want to move can be attached to something metal, uh, then it can be very good for um, robotics projects. Uh, you can use this with Cricut and just treat it like a solenoid or a motor. Um, because it's a coil, you do need to have something with kickback protection, because it's, it's a big coil around a metal piece, and there's a little mounting screw here that you can use, but um, use something with kickback protection. Just don't, you can't connect it to a microcontroller pin, you have to have a transistor with a, with a kickback diode. Um, as long as it can provide about half an amp and five volts, you're golden. Um, if you have a lot of these you want to control, like a ULN 2803 is great or a cricket again it's, it's super easy to use so i recommend that so now we have four different sizes from smallest to largest um weigh what you want to pick up and uh, look at your power budget and then pick the one that matches electromagnets magneto time okay next up yeah this is recommended from people doing wearables this is a um flexible super skinny circuit board it's a proto board but it's a 0.4 millimeter thick so it's flexible as you saw it's also cuttable you can cut this very easily with scissors or of course uh, if you have like diagonal cutters but even the plain scissors will be able to cut this it's quite thin it's got 0.1 uh, inch millimeter sorry 0.1 inch uh, pitch spacing grid it's just a proto, proto holes. There's no uh, wires in between. There's no connections between. But actually, I think I prefer that. You know, I, I, I like it. It's something like this, especially with its flexibility, um, you would use uh, silicone wires perhaps to connect between the pads. But because it's so flexible and cuttable, you can make custom shapes. It could be really good for wearables if you want a custom circuit board shape um, or something that's flexible and movable um, or like something that goes into a bag or something that goes into... Uh, an outfit or shoes or something this could be a really great prototyping material and there's um it's not plated on the other side so this is where you'd put your components as through hole components or of course you can put surface mount components on the bottom here if they're largely spaced enough and or you can use an adapter and so i think this is kind of a it's it's not too expensive and you get a lot it's a big sheet and uh make something cool with it it's a lot cheaper than making flex pcbs that is for sure they're expensive to make and this is just about as good mm -hmm. Does the flex board have solderable holes? Yes, you can solder these holes. These are these are silver plated, not silver, but they're uh, they're tin plated holes. 
So you would put your uh, components through here as if it was normal breadboard and then solder to it and solder. It's you flexible can solder. perma proto almost. Yeah, it's a, we have a flexible perma proto which is actually made out of like flex material, yeah. but it's like flex material is just pricey compared yeah. to just very thin yeah, this can cut, circuit can board. Say. Yeah, and this is good enough for most projects. So I think for cosplay and wearables especially, this would be okay. super handy. Next up, more wearables. This is a wearable. Of. I'm actually <laughs> wearing this wearable right now. You may be wondering, what is that beautiful necklace that you wear? Um, and uh, this is from Circuit Breaker Lab. Which they take recycled circuit boards, and you can see each one is a little different. So i got to tell you, what you, we can't guarantee what you're, you're going to get. You're going to get some electronic component thing. I guarantee it will look cool, but I can't guarantee yeah. what exactly it will look like. Um, so this is me wearing it. You can see it's kind of a mid um, chest design, so you can see here. It kind of yep. hangs nice. It comes with a silver chain. It's a very comfortable chain, and it's a it's like a snake chain, so it doesn't catch your hair, which I like. And it's got a clasp. And it's a silver chain. So let me um, take this off, and I'll show it under the overhead. So it's a. Um, actually, this would be a good one to show the light. Is there a light on here? Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, it's a circuit board. This one has three chips on it and a couple capacitors. And it's embedded in this nice, beautiful silver backing and then epoxied. They're very durable. Um, they look great. And yeah, each one's a little different. I like the blue circuit boards, classic Adafruit blue. So we're going to carry um, this simple pendant. It's kind of the most popular design if people like these. Um, they have also other designs on their website. So go to Circuit, Break it, circuit Breaker Labs. Um, they've got, you know, like keychains and, and badge holders and yep. and rings but I thought we'd start with a simple uh, beautiful pendant but yeah each one is unique and different and recycled and uh, maybe you can you know detect what it was maybe do some investigative reporting okay. on um, your necklace next up as promised um, we were stalking the Lady Ada s'more magazine that we showed off last week or so so these are if you're, you can't get to the newsstand you didn't subscribe in time you can Get a lady to yep. copy. I showed this, but I can show it again. No, it's, it's fine. It's kind of what you see here. It's, yep. it's a really wonderful, it's, it's timeless. Um, the content isn't dated, so you can give this, and it's like it's something, like it's a book. It's like a magazine book that they can read many, many times. Yep. Other magazine we have is Hackspace. Yep, we have a bunch of these left over. We um, had a giveaway in an Ada box, but we have a bunch left over, and if you are Yep. interested in Hackspace Magazine. We love it. It's a really wonderful magazine. Subscribe, but then maybe you want to get an older issue. Um, this issue is uh, is good. That's why we include it in Box. Okay, and next up. We have, um, this is coming soon. We're going to have it very shortly. Um, this is a 8 ohm, 1 watt speaker with a little Molex uh, Pico Blade connector, a 1.25 millimeter connector. It's got a little adhesive on the front. You can stick it to stuff. It's a really nice thin speaker with the cable. We're getting it so you can plug it into the Halloween um, so you can make projects like you saw JP's um, lightsaber. The sound effects come through the speaker. It's pretty loud for the size and you just plug it in and go. Uh, you can use it for your own projects. You don't have to use a connector. You can cut it off and then just solder it as you like. Um, I think my favorite thing about this is the um, wires. You can see they're epoxied. So they're not going to come off. Some some less expensive speakers, the wires can come off easily. But you can see these are nicely attached. Okay. And then tonight to start besides you and our community, Lady Ada, is, is the, vision the AY Vision Kit. Yay! So we um, did a bunch of videos and, and, and promotions for the AIY Vision Kit when this first came out. This is very neat. It comes with a vision bonnet. It's, an, it's a, a TensorFlow enabled hardware device. You don't have to connect it to the internet. It's all in one, it can detect like a couple thousand different things. Um, I have one wired up here. Yeah, I also have a very short video that's 45 seconds. So let's play that and then we'll go Okay, to the let's play the video and then do this. This is an object classifier. For some objects, it does a great job. 99% Granny Smith Apple. But this is one of the important things about artificial intelligence. It's not perfect all the time. Cleaver, meat cleaver, you know, fountain pen, ballpoint pen. So the angles change that. This particular pen, as attractive as it is with this MIT logo on it, um, it doesn't really know what it is. It thinks it's a bobsled. Um, so these kinds of errors that the that the, the software gives are going to be what users need to work with and to understand that artificial intelligence is just as limited as any other technology that they're working with. AI. Uh -huh. Do it yourself, AI. Uh -huh. but, exactly. Good branding there. Exactly. Yeah.
Okay, to the overhead. Okay. Um, so yeah, it comes um, as a bunch of pieces. There's no soldering required. There's a Raspberry Pi Zero, WH, which has the headers already attached, um, Division Bone, which has GPIO and power. And then it, it uses the Pi camera, and there's a little speaker and a little LED, and then there's a button that you can use to uh, select modes and stuff. But I think let's go to the um, big camera and we can do the detection. So this should be able to detect smiles. Oh, it's changing color. I think it's detecting me. How about you? Are you smiling? You're not smiling, so it's not turning pink. See, this is the problem. Oh, that, wait. There you go, see, it's, it detected it. Okay, well, this is um, the demo code which um, detects uh, frowns and smiles. And when you smile at it, it, it turns pink. And then uh, when you're frowning or it doesn't detect a person, it turns blue or clear. And this is one of the demos. It also has the demo where it can detect objects. Um, I saw somebody wrote uh, a code for it to detect um, hand gestures, maybe for um, sign language recognition. Um, it's a very powerful piece of hardware, and especially that it's standalone. A lot of times, um, these vision recognition kits do the TensorFlow on some cloud server. This doesn't actually does it all on the hardware. So it's a, a surprisingly uh, powerful device. It can um, yeah, do a bunch of different detections. You can train it. Um, it uses the Movidius chipset, which is kind of new uh, uh, um, artificial intelligence. Uh, what's it called? Um, machine learning. Machine learning. <laughs> machine learning chipset that you can train with models and then it will do automatic detection for you. Um, it's got a little beeper, which is kind of nice. And yeah, it's an all-in-one kit. So we're carrying the complete kit. It's $100, but you get everything. Then you don't have to do no soldering, everything plugs in, all the custom hardware, and you're good to go. So that's the AIY Vision Kit. I think a lot of people are gonna do very interesting projects with it because it's rare for this kind of um, intense machine learning technology to make it to make it to make it to makers usually this is used for um uh you know automatic driving cars autonomous cars and you can put this on a car and have this be an autonomous rover driver there's a gpio in the back hook it up to a cricket and you can make a little uh, robot driver but uh, i think this will this will unlock a lot of very interesting projects that you can do with OpenCV. okay and with that